All right, so in this video here, we're going to take a look at uh, uh, taking the antiderivative of some trig functions. So, and we'll be using u substitution to do it. So you can see here we have our our trig functions here. Okay, so you can see the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Secant squared is tangent. Secant tangent is secant. Cosecant squared is negative cotangent. And cosecant cotangent is negative cosecant. Okay, and and you got to make sure that you add the plus c plus the constant term. So these formulas here, you have to you have to know them. Now, what we're going to try to do with all of these problems is we're going to try to get them to look like one of these formulas. Okay, we've got to try to get it in this form. Okay, and we'll use u substitution to do that. So let's take a look at some examples. All right, so in this first example, we've got uh, 5 times cosine 5x dx. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to let u equal this 5x. And then what that'll do is that'll give us cosine u. Okay, so I'm going to let u equal 5x and so then I differentiate and so du is equal the derivative of this that's going to be 5 and then times dx alright so let's rewrite the problem I've got 5 cosine 5x dx now here I'm going to replace the 5x, this 5x, with a u. So u is going to be plugged in for 5x. And then this 5dx, you see the 5dx, that's going to be replaced with du. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get cosine, that equals. I'm going to get cosine u, okay, I plugged u in for 5x, and then the 5dx, the 5dx is going to be replaced with du. And so now you can see I have it in that form. And so the antiderivative is going to be sine u plus c. Okay. Now, my original problem is in terms of x, so I have to get my answer back in terms of x. So I'm going to take what u equals, see u equals 5x, so I'm going to take this 5x and I'm going to put it back in for u. And so that's going to give me sine 5x plus c. And there's my answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay. And once again, we want to get it in one of those forms, like our formula. And so here, I'm going to let u equal what I'm taking the sign of here, this x to the fourth. And so I'm going to let u equal x to the fourth and so that means du the derivative of this is 4x cubed times dx okay so let's come over here and rewrite the problem again so I've got x cubed sine x to the fourth dx all right so the x to the fourth is going to be replaced with u because I let u equal x to the fourth. Okay, so so that's taken care of. That's going to go there. The u is going to be plugged in for x to the fourth. Now let's look and see what I have here. 
I have 4x cubed dx. But here, I only have x cubed dx. I don't have the 4 here. Well, what I can do is I can multiply this by 4. But if I multiply it by 4, I have to also come out here and multiply by 1 fourth. And what that does is it makes it to where I'm multiplying by 1 fourth times 4, which is 1. And since I'm multiplying by 1, that doesn't change the problem of any. So that's why I'm allowed to do that. And so now I have 1 fourth, okay, and then that's going to be sine, and in the place of x to the fourth, I'm going to put u, and now I have 4x cubed dx, and 4x cubed dx is du, so that's going to be du, and so that's going to be 1 fourth times, and then the antiderivative of sine u is negative cosine u, okay, plus c. And so this is going to give me negative 1 fourth cosine u plus c. And just like in the last problem, my original problem is in terms of x, so I have to get my solution in terms of x. And so this is going to be negative 1 fourth cosine, and then in the place of u, I'm going to put x to the fourth, x to the fourth, and then that's plus c. Okay. Let's look at another one. All right. <clears throat> so this problem here is going to be a little bit different than the first two that we worked. <clears throat> well, you can see that we have sine x over cosine cubed x. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to rewrite this thing and I'm going to rewrite it as sine x over cosine x and remember cosine cubed x is the same thing as cosine x all that raised to the third power. Okay. And so what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to use u substitution. So I've got sine x, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cosine x to the third, and I'm going to move it up into the numerator. And when I do that, that's going to give me cosine x to the negative 3 dx. No, and I left my dx off there too. All right. So now, using u substitution, if you notice here how I have cosine x raised to a power, we're going to let u equal this cosine x here. Because if you look at cosine x, what's the derivative of cosine x? Well, it's negative sine x. So that gives us something pretty close to this one. Okay, It gives us everything but the negative sign. But we can take care of that like we did in the previous two problems. All right, so I'm going to let u equal cosine x. So du is equal to negative sine x dx. All right, <clears throat> so let me rewrite my problem here. So I've got sine x times 
cosine x to the negative 3 dx. All right. <clears throat> so the u is going to be put in for cosine x, okay, because I let u equal cosine x. And then I've got sine x dx, and there's sine x dx. But this one also has a negative in front of it. So I can multiply by negative 1, okay, and I guess we can go ahead and put the negative 1 there. And if I do that, I have to come out here and multiply by the reciprocal, 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. But I just wrote it out like that so you can see what we're actually doing. All right, so this is going to give me negative 1. I'm just going to put the negative. We don't have to put the 1. And then this is cosine x. That's going to be u to the negative 3. And then you can see we have negative sine x dx. Well, what is negative sine x dx? Well, negative sine x dx is du. So that's du. Now, let me let me change the color back. So there's du. And so now here you can see we have the power rule. Okay. So this is going to be negative. And then remember the power rule. I add 1. Okay. Remember you add 1 to the exponent. And so that's going to be u to the negative 2. And then we multiply by the reciprocal of the new exponent. So that's times negative 1 half plus c. So this is going to give me 1 half u to the negative 2 plus c. And notice how I have a negative here. So I'm going to make that exponent positive, and so I'm going to move it down to the denominator, and that changes the sign of the exponent. So that's going to be 1 over 2u squared plus c. And then I need to get my answer back in, the, back in terms of x. So what is u? Well, u is okay so u is cosine x so I'm going to put cosine x in for u and so this is going to give me 1 over 2 cosine squared x plus c. It's cosine x, all of that squared, but we can write it as cosine squared x. And this would be our solution. Alright, so let's take a look at one last problem. Alright, <clears throat> so what do we notice here? Well, we have a cosecant squared and we have cotangent cubed. Well, <clears throat> What am I going to let u equal? Well, they're both raised to a power, so it's both. It's like they're both in parentheses raised to a power. And when we use u substitution like that, we usually let the part in parentheses equal u. Well, in this case, they would both be in parentheses. But if we look, if we look at this cotangent here, okay. What's the derivative of cotangent? The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So that gets us this, gets us everything except for the negative sign. Well, we can take care of that negative sign just like we did in the previous problem. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and rewrite this. And so this is going to be cosecant squared x and I'm gonna just like I did in the last one I'm gonna move that up and that's gonna be cotangent 
x and I'm going to go ahead and write it in parentheses and that's to the negative 3 dx. <clears throat> Alright, so now I'm going to let u equal cotangent x so du is equal to negative cosecant squared x times dx <clears throat> and you can see that I've got negative cosecant squared dx and here I have cosecant squared x dx I have everything but the negative and we can take care of that just like we did in the last problem <clears throat> so let's come down here and rewrite the problem again so I have cosecant let me move it over a little bit so I can put the negative in there. So I have cosecant squared x times cotangent x to the negative 3 dx. Okay, So the u is going to be substituted in for cotangent. Okay, And here I have negative cosecant squared dx, but here I only have cosecant squared dx. So I have to multiply by negative 1, and then just like in the last one, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So now I have negative, and then that's going to be u to the negative 3 and then in the place of negative cosecant squared dx negative cosecant squared dx I'm gonna put du and now I have the power rule so I add 1 to the exponent and so that's gonna give me negative and that's u to the negative 2 and then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal and that's plus c and so this is going to give me 1 half u to the negative 2 plus c and the rest of this is just like the last problem we did I'm going to take this move it to the denominator and that changes the sign of the exponent so that's going to be 1 over 2u squared plus c and then I'm going to need to get my answer back in terms of x so in the place of u I'm going to put cotangent x and so this is going to be 1 over 2 and in the place of u I put cotangent x and that's all squared and I can put the squared there so that's 1 over 2 cotangent squared x plus c and there's our answer and that's all of this video I hope it helped uh, hope you'll check out my other videos thanks